Let me begin by saying that you deserve the best for a partner in marriage, and God wants you to have the best. And He's committed to helping you meet this person and establish a healthy relationship with them. How does God make this happen for you? Well, it's simple. He makes your paths cross. He brings the two of you together to give you an opportunity with one another. He might even be sending someone to come into your heart without your knowledge as you watch this video right now. Therefore, if you don't know how to understand how He brings people into your life, then this video is for you. You need to learn this because you might be pushing away your soulmate without knowing they are the answer to your prayers, simply because you feel they don't look like they are. Know that God Himself said that, as long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, will never cease. This is from Genesis 8.22. Different verses throughout the Bible show us that our times and seasons are actually in God's hands. For example, it says in Daniel 2.21, He changes times and seasons. He deposes kings and raises up others. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. But one of the challenges we face as children of God is that we do not always understand how these times and seasons work. We are almost too sure that we are in control of what goes on in our lives, and we will only want what we can control, nothing less. This is often why we miss when God moves on our behalf. This is often why we miss some great blessings and opportunities that God brings our way, because we did not understand what God was trying to do for us, and therefore could not receive the blessing. For example, there is someone who has been praying for a life partner, the right life partner, who will be a safe place, a source of encouragement, a joy giver, a friend, and the special kind of lover as ordained by God. And God never had an opportunity with that request. In fact, that's exactly what He wants to give to His children, someone with whom you can serve Him and grow old happily. However, this person seems to have waited and waited and nothing seems to be happening. Apart from the fact that it might not be this person's time yet, what if another reason they are still waiting is because they keep pushing away the right person when God brings them their way? Can you take a moment to consider this? If you came to me and told me you were hungry and had not eaten anything for two days and I had something to give you, I would gladly do so. But what if after preparing you a hot meal that I knew you would like, you kept rejecting it while saying you were waiting for me to come with a meal for you? wouldn't that leave you hungry? In this situation, you would starve not because you weren't being served a meal, but because you were being too picky about the meal being presentable. And remember that I can only provide you with what I had to offer. Similarly, God can only give us what He has to offer, which is the best. However, many single Christians keep rejecting God's best while expecting Him to bring the best. It's a continuous cycle of confusion and ignorance that leaves many of us stranded like God isn't answering our prayers. Then we settle for less. You see, God's ways are not human ways. His words tell us that in Isaiah 55, 8-9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. So before you go about turning people down, please remember that everyone is made in God's image and carries a treasure inside of them. And if they are born again in Christ, God wants you to accept and walk with them because God now lives in them. You must know that no matter how a person looks today, even if they are poor or hopeless, if God is with them, you may be doing yourself a great disservice when you rule them out and talk down to them. There is a popular saying that goes, don't judge a book by its cover. It means don't make general conclusions on anyone based on a biased opinion or a wrong perspective. The person you look down on today may be the person God is sending into your life to shape your future. They may be the father or mother who your children truly deserve. They may be the one person God wants you to have standing beside you to walk through your doors of breakthrough when they open for you. I have seen people's lives change dramatically when they opened up their hearts to see beyond the natural and give someone God sent their way a chance. 
This person was the key, the missing piece needed for their story to change, and the moment they united, the tables were turned. The one who didn't look like much became the instrument of blessing, the one bringing you gifts upon gifts. I've also watched people jump into another person's arms solely because of what they had to offer in the natural sense, particularly money, fame, or sexual satisfaction, only to end up in an abusive and regrettable future. This is why your spiritual senses should be sharp so that you will be able to discern when the right one comes your way. This is essential because the difference between who you are today and the future prepared for you may rely on your ability to tell what God is doing and following Him. This is called the ability to discern. Hear what God said about His people Israel not being able to discern their seasons in Jeremiah 8, 7. Even the stork in the sky knows her appointed seasons, and the dove, the swift, and the thrush observe the time of their migration. But my people do not know the requirements of the Lord. You need to learn and develop your spiritual senses to know what God is doing in your life and what your responses should be so that you don't miss your miracle of a life partner. That's what Satan wants to happen in your life. He wants you to end up in regret and shame. But the devil is a liar and God is sending you help through this video to open your eyes and break you free from bondage. When everyone is insulting someone and discouraging you from giving them a chance, make sure that your decision is coming from a place of personal discernment and not social pressure. Don't let anyone deceive you. I have seen people discourage ladies from a good man only for the same people to go on to marry the same good man, while the lady they discouraged was left still waiting. You need to make sure that you are seeing beyond the natural. Give this person the benefit of the doubt. Talk to them. Befriend them. Let God show you through different identifying means whether this person is your future partner or not. If they are, you will sense a connection deep within your heart. Don't turn that down. God is already speaking to you about them. If you need advice about someone, don't seek it from most of the people around you whose spiritual lives still needs development, especially when you observe their characters and see that they treat people poorly. Don't ask that friend who chooses relationships based on money and pleasure instead of character. Don't ask that single friend who has never been able to make a relationship work. Don't ask that single friend whose character resulted in their partner leaving them. Rather, seek out and talk to mentors and friends who love and fear God and who have committed themselves to seek His purpose for their lives. Talk to those whose lives are truly demonstrating that they are practicing the Word of God and have the results to show for it. Yes, sometimes it may take a while to heal from the past hurts and pains. Sometimes you may have to deal with the fear of being disappointed. However, the right attitude, the right circle of people with you, and the help of the Holy Spirit, your steps will not end in failure. Something great will come out of it when God is in it. And how do you know that God is in it? When this person walks in the attributes of a genuine Christian and you constantly sense a deep connection to them in your heart, feel a sense of peace and welcome whenever you're around them. Feel that you are always at your best when they are with you and feel you can be yourself with them are evidence that this person deserves a place in your heart. God may be sending them to you, so don't push them away and you will be glad you never did. It's fascinating how the divine orchestrates meanings between soulmates. Often, God uses the most unconventional ways to introduce you to the person He's chosen for you. Let's delve into these peculiar channels God uses to unveil your destined partner. Number one, discovering the ordained bond through adversity. Often our minds paint an image of divine journeys as effortless paths laden with roses. Similarly, when it comes to unveiling the one destined for us, we romanticize a flawless, serene relationship gifted by God. However, reality unfolds a deeper, more profound narrative. In truth, the union God has blessed unfolds its strength through trials, much like a refining of gold in a fiery furnace. It's not about the absence of problems, but the ability to grow stronger through them.
that often signals a divine pairing. When adversities knock, they don't shatter the bond. Instead, they fortify it, crafting a foundation robust enough to withstand life's tempests. This notion echoes the wisdom shared in Job 23.10. When he has tried me, I shall come out as gold. The journey of Job reflects a poignant truth. Through trials, our essence is refined, our bonds fortified. Picture this, a blacksmith melding two distinct metals into one. The process demands heat, pressure, and time. But at the end of this grueling process, what emerges is a single, unified, stronger entity. Similarly, the adversities faced together act as the divine forge, melding two souls into a stronger, unified entity, ready to face life's bountiful challenges. This divine blacksmithing isn't just a random process, it's a sacred choreography orchestrated by God to reveal the one He's chosen for you. Each challenge faced together, each misunderstanding navigated, and every forgiveness offered and accepted is a step closer to unearthing the profound connection God has blessed. So, when the storms of life brew, observe the dance in the rain, the unity amidst the chaos, the love that blossoms through understanding and forgiveness. For it's through these seemingly weird yet wonderful ways, God often unveils the one He desires you to share a lifetime with. Through every trial faced together, the bond deepens, the love strengthens, and the divine blueprint of a shared life becomes more apparent. Number two, the divine dance of healing through personal wounds. In the mysterious yet divine choreography of love, God often intertwines two souls whose wounds echo the melody of healing. Unlike the worldly perception of a perfect match, the divine narrative often orchestrates a union where individual wounds don't merely collide, but they harmonize to unveil a pathway to healing. Consider a narrative where a gentleman, haunted by past betrayals, crosses paths with a lady whose heart trembles at the thought of abandonment. His defensive retreat, a mechanism to shield his heart, seemingly threatens her with the ghost of abandonment. Yet their love for each other beckons a pursuit of healing, an endeavor to mend the fissures that threaten their bond. Similarly, picture a narrative where a woman, shrouded in the veil of perceived inadequacy of beauty, meets a man whose heart races with the fear of not being valiant enough. Her guarded demeanor, stemming from the fear of rejection, seemingly challenges his innate desire to be her knight in shining armor. Yet when God is the director of their love story, He utilizes these insecurities to foster a deeper understanding and validation in Christ, eventually leading to a stronger bond between them. Scripture beautifully articulates this divine choreography of healing in Proverbs 27, 17. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. The journey might be speckled with moments of discomfort, yet it's through these very experiences that God orchestrates a deeper pursuit of healing. The essence of this divine narrative is not to run from the pain, but to embrace the healing journey together. Number 3. The Evolution of Love One might say the course of true love is akin to the molding of metal. In the early stages, the fiery passion can be likened to the heat that enables the fusion of two metals. This fervor acts as a crucible, bringing two hearts together in a bond that's fresh, exciting, and warm. It's a beautiful phase, filled with discovery and joy, much like the shimmer of newly forged metal. Yet as any blacksmith will tell you, it's the cooling, the tempering that lends metal its real strength. Similarly, the initial fervor in relationships needs to mature, to settle into a deeper, enduring love. This transition, often seen as the end of the honeymoon phase, is not the dwindling of love, but it's the evolution into something more profound. It's in this quiet, steady love where you find comfort, understanding, and a closeness that's quietly exhilarating. It's where you know each other's flaws, yet find them endearing. It's the place where love is not just a feeling, but a choice, 
a commitment that's unshakable. The Bible beautifully captures this in Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 10. How beautiful is your love, my sister, my bride! How much better is your love than wine, and the fragrance of your oils than any spice? The passage elucidates that there's a depth of love far superior to the fleeting thrills the world offers. This metamorphosis of love, from an exciting passion to a deeper, steadfast affection, is a peculiar yet divine way God often uses to point out the one you're destined to share a lifetime with. It's a journey from loving the idea of someone to cherishing the real, imperfect person with all the grace and forgiveness that mirrors Christ's love for us. Number 4. Embracing Eccentricities A Divine Signature of Compatibility We all come with our collection of peculiar habits or preferences. Maybe it's the way someone laughs heartily at the faintest hint of humor. Or perhaps the way another person cherishes silence. Some might find joy in the virtual realms of video games while others might face solace in the pages of a good book or the rhythm of physical labor. These quirks are a testament to the divine craftsmanship as echoed in Psalm 139, 14. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Every quirk is a thread in the beautiful tapestry of our individuality. But what happens when these quirks meet the scrutiny of another in the dance of dating? It's not uncommon to stumble upon individuals whose quirks stir irritation rather than endearment. Such is a sign that the divine compass might be nudging you to continue your search. However, when God orchestrates a union, there's a peculiar phenomenon of acceptance that unfolds. In the divine design, when two souls are meant to journey together, their quirks become endearing tunes rather than discordant notes. There's a mysterious ease an unexplained comfort in accepting each other's peculiar traits. It's as though God sprinkles a little extra grace over the couple, enabling them to dance to the rhythm of each other's quirks with a joyful heart. This acceptance doesn't stem from a place of forced tolerance, but from a divine acknowledgement of each other's unique design. It's an odd yet beautiful hallmark of a God-orchestrated love story. Number 5 the genesis of a new life together. Embarking on a journey with the one God's chosen for you isn't about merely merging two existing lives into a convenient setup. It's about crafting an entirely new life, a fresh chapter that's unique to just the two of you. When God steers you towards the person you're meant to be with, the narrative isn't about you stepping into their world or them stepping into yours. It's about the both of you stepping into a new realm hand in hand. Let's put it into a perspective that's as simple as morning coffee. Imagine every individual as a distinct coffee bean. When God leads you to the one, He doesn't just throw your beans together in a grinder hoping it mixes well. Instead, He brews a new blend with a flavor that's exceptional to both of you. The hurdles often emerge when couples believe it's about accommodating each other into their already established lives. Yes, post-marriage, there are practical adjustments like moving into a new home, managing finances together, or maybe relocating to a new city. But these are mere logistics. The core essence is about nurturing a new garden where your relationship can blossom, separate yet connected from the gardens you both were nurtured in. When a man and a woman unite in marriage, they're not just continuing on their individual paths side by side. They're carving out a new path together. They're becoming a new entity, just like Genesis 2.24 elucidates. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. This isn't just about the physical union, but a spiritual, emotional, and life-encompassing union that forms a new family unit distinct from the ones they belong to. The magic unfolds when both individuals led by the divine compass venture into this uncharted territory with hearts full of love, faith, and a dash of divine mystery. 
This transition isn't just enchanting. It's a profound testament to God's incredible plan for every loving union He crafts. Imagine you're embarking on a thrilling adventure, and along the way you encounter a mysterious fog that shrouds your path. You can't see what lies ahead, and doubts start creeping in. This is the journey of finding the partner God has chosen for you. It might seem foggy, but there's a divine purpose behind it all. In our quest for love and a blessed marriage, God orchestrates a series of events, including moments of doubt, to shape us for His ultimate plan. Doubt, though unsettling, isn't a roadblock. It's a necessary stepping stone. Just as the Bible tells us that marriage is a beautiful and cherished institution, God takes us on a transformative journey to prepare us for the partner and purpose He has in store. Sometimes, the person God presents or the future He unveils seems too incredible to be true, like a dream beyond reach. We all yearn for a perfect partner in a harmonious home, but yearning alone doesn't guarantee belief. Belief requires trust in God's promise. It's akin to embarking on a hike to the summit of a towering mountain. You might gaze at the peak, but it's the belief in reaching the top that fuels your ascent. Doubt often creeps in due to past experiences or our own perceptions. Maybe you faced heartbreak or disappointment, leaving scars that make it hard to trust God's plan fully. It's natural to wonder if you're deserving of a loving partner or a blissful home. But remember that God's love and plans for you are boundless. Think of your life as a puzzle, and each experience, including doubt, is a crucial piece fitting into God's grand design. Doubt isn't a sign of weakness, but a test of your faith. It's an opportunity for God to strengthen your belief in His promise and His timing. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 For we walk by faith, not by sight. This verse reminds us that faith is the guiding light through the fog of doubt. God wants you to trust His vision for your life, even when you can't see the road clearly. Just as Peter walked on water when he focused on Jesus rather than the storm, you too can conquer doubt by fixing your gaze on God's faithfulness. Consider doubt as the clouds that momentarily hide the sun. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's gone. Likewise, when doubt clouds your vision, God's plan remains steadfast. It's during these moments that your trust in Him deepens, making the reward of a loving partner and a blessed home all the more precious. So, my friends, when doubt about your chosen partner surfaces, remember that it's a part of your journey, a journey that God is intricately crafting. Embrace it as a chance to grow, to strengthen your faith, and ultimately step into the beautiful love story God has penned for you. Your doubts are not a sign of God's absence, but a testament to His presence, guiding you toward a love that exceeds your wildest dreams. As you navigate through the mist of doubt, may your faith shine brighter than ever before. Trust in God's plan for your love story, and in due time, the fog will clear, revealing the extraordinary path He has prepared for you. You see, God allows doubt to cross your path not to discourage you, but to draw you closer to Him. It's a way of reminding you that you can't do this on your own, that you need His guidance and strength. Think of it as a gentle nudge from the Almighty, encouraging you to rely more on His wisdom and less on your own understanding. Remember the story of the father with the epileptic son in Mark 9. He brought his son to the disciples and to Jesus, desperate for help. Yet even though he wished for his son's recovery, deep down he struggled with unbelief. Sound familiar? We've all been there, yearning for something but lacking the faith to truly receive it. But here's the beautiful part. Jesus didn't scold the Father for his doubts. Instead, he lovingly pointed out that faith can move mountains. In Mark chapter 9, verses 23 through 24, Jesus said, If you can, everything is possible for one who believes. The Father, in his humility, cried out, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. And that's where the magic happens. Just like that Father, God allows doubt to surface in your heart so that through faith, you can overcome it. He wants you to understand that it's not a matter of whether God can bless your life with an incredible partner. It's a matter of whether you can believe and receive that blessing. You see, the doubt you face isn't meant to be a roadblock, but a stepping stone. 
It's there to refine your faith, to strengthen your trust in God's plan, and to remind you that you are not the architect of your destiny. He is. Think about it this way. Imagine you're trying to assemble a complicated piece of furniture. You may doubt your ability to put it together correctly. So, you turn to the instruction manual. In the same way, God allows doubt to send you back to His Word, to the ultimate instruction manual for life, the Bible. Within its pages, you'll find the guidance and promises you need to navigate your doubts and emerge stronger in your faith. Remember, God is not just interested in granting you a partner. He's interested in nurturing your relationship with Him. When you learn to trust Him in the midst of doubt, you become more reliant on His wisdom, grace, and love. And that's a beautiful place to be. God may be allowing doubt to take root in your heart for a purpose. It's not because He wants to see you struggle or falter, but because He wants you to turn to Him in earnest. It's in these moments of doubt that our faith can truly flourish. So, how do you navigate the sea of uncertainty? Through prayer, the simplest yet most powerful tool at your disposal. Your prayer doesn't have to be filled with elaborate words or perfect grammar. It can be as simple as, Lord, I'm standing at this crossroads and I'm filled with doubt. I don't know if I have what it takes or if this is your plan for me. Please help me strengthen my faith. Admitting your doubt before God is an act of humility and trust. It's an acknowledgement that you can't do it alone, that you need His guidance. And here's the beautiful part. When you admit your doubt before God, you open the door for Him to respond with an answer of faith. What does that mean? It means that God can enable you to believe when, on your own, you might struggle to find a reason to believe. He can infuse you with a faith that transcends doubt. You see, God doesn't cause doubt in your heart. He allows it. The difference is crucial. Doubt is a choice, a reflection of where you are in your relationship with God. But even faith, the antidote to doubt, is a gift from God. He gives it to us in different measures, tailored to our unique journeys. So, when doubt creeps in, recognize it as an opportunity to seek a deeper, more steadfast faith. It's a chance to grow, to embrace the uncertainty, and to trust that God is leading you, even when you can't see the path clearly. This is the answer of faith, the response to doubt that strengthens your spiritual foundation. As you navigate the twists and turns of your dating journey, remember that God's plan for your life is filled with purpose and intention. Doubt may be a part of that journey, but it's not the destination. It's a stepping stone towards a stronger, more unwavering faith. And in that faith, You'll find the clarity and confidence you need to discern whether someone is truly chosen as your partner. Doubt can be a catalyst for growth. Just like lifting weights to build muscle, God may allow doubt to place you in a position where you can exercise your faith. When you face uncertainties about your partner, it's an opportunity to lean on God, seeking His guidance and wisdom. It's in these moments of doubt that your faith can grow stronger, like a muscle being trained for endurance. God knows you better than you know yourself. He understands the depths of your heart and your walk with Him. Sometimes, He allows doubt to surface not to mock or hurt you, but to reveal your inner world to you. He uses these uncomfortable situations to expose any immaturity, fear, or limitations you might have. It's like shining a light on areas that need growth and refinement. Now, let's not forget the importance of trust and humility in your walk with God. Immature faith often demands that God aligns with our exact desires and expectations. But true faith, the kind God desires, involves surrendering to His will and trusting His plans, even when they differ from our own. As you navigate the doubts about your chosen partner, Remember that God has a purpose in allowing this struggle. Seek Him in prayer, study His Word, and meditate on verses that resonate with your journey. One such verse is Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5-6. through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. You see, faith is a precious gift from God, but it's not passive, something we actively work on. Just as a relationship grows through time and effort, so does our faith. 
When doubt creeps in, it's an opportunity for our faith to flourish. It's a chance to declare our need for God's wisdom and guidance. And in return, He blesses us with a partner beyond our wildest dreams. So, my dear friend, the next time you find yourself doubting the path that God has chosen for you in matters of love, remember that doubt can be a stepping stone to deeper faith. Trust that God's plan is far more extraordinary than anything you could have imagined. Through doubt, He guides us to a love that's built on faith, and that's a love that's truly worth the wait. Sometimes, God uses our moments of uncertainty to guide us towards greater clarity. In the realm of relationships, this couldn't be more relevant. If everything was crystal clear from the very start, if you never had to wrestle with doubts or uncertainties, would you truly seek God for His guidance? Would you earnestly seek His will and purpose for your life? Often, it's the lack of certainty that compels us to turn to God to seek His wisdom and discernment. Finding the One isn't just about the lovely romantic moments. It's about aligning your life with someone whose goals and values resonate harmoniously with yours. Imagine your life as a journey towards a shared destination. You don't want to travel with someone who's heading in a completely different direction. That's where the importance of shared goals and values come into play. It's not about agreeing on every little thing. Differences can be beautiful. But it is about having a fundamental understanding of where you want to go in life. Living with someone whose goals, opinions, and values vastly differ from yours can be incredibly challenging. It's like trying to walk in an opposite direction on a narrow path. You'll certainly clash and struggle to find common ground. And if you're in a relationship where you're witnessing such stark differences, it's a clear signal that this person may not be the one meant for you. When you meet the one, doubt may pay you a visit. Let's dive into something we've all felt at one point or another in our quest for love. Doubt. It's like that unexpected guest who shows up uninvited to the party. You're about to discover why encountering doubt when you meet the one might not be such a bad thing after all. Picture this, you're on a journey seeking a special someone to share your life with. You've met someone who seems to tick all the boxes. They're kind, funny, and share your values. But then, just when you thought you were sure, doubt creeps in. You find yourself questioning if this person is truly the one. Having doubts about someone is perfectly normal. In fact, it's healthy. If you were to meet someone and instantly believe they're the one without any ounce of doubt, it might be cause for concern. Blindly following your feelings can lead to unwise decisions. Doubt in dating is somewhat akin to questioning your own salvation. People often wonder, am I truly saved? How can I be sure I'm a genuine Christian? Yes, confessing with your mouth that Jesus is Lord is crucial. Romans 10.9 but Jesus also said, You will recognize them by their fruits. Matthew 7:16. In other words, a true Christian's life should bear fruit, and self-examination is a part of this process. The same principles apply to dating. The doubt you feel is like a self-examination of your emotions and intentions. It's a sign that you're not blindly following your own feelings, but instead seeking God's guidance. In 2 Corinthians 13.5, the Bible urges us to examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. This willingness to examine your authenticity as a Christian is a positive sign that you are genuinely seeking the truth. Similarly, when you doubt if someone is the one, it shows that you're not rushing into things. This doubt is a stepping stone, a part of the process God uses to confirm whether this person is indeed the one He intends for you to marry. So don't be alarmed by doubt. Embrace it as a part of your journey. When you can imagine not being with this person, it allows you to trust God's plan more when He affirms that this individual is the one. Now, let's dig deeper into recognizing the one. It's not just about feelings. It's about compatibility. When you find someone who shares your goals and values, planning your lives together becomes a joyous adventure. It's about being with someone who envisions a future with you, not just someone looking for what they can get from you. 
Furthermore, authenticity is a telltale sign. The one is a person with whom you can be your true self. You don't need to put on a facade or pretend to be someone you're not. Those quirky, unique parts of you are on full display and you feel comfortable in your own skin. No need to impress or struggle to fit a mold. You are with the one. Remember, meeting the one isn't just about hearts and flowers. It's about a deeper connection, shared values, and the comfort of being your genuine self. Embrace doubt as a guide on your journey and trust that God's plan will lead you to the one meant for you. When you meet the one, you'll experience growth, grace, and gratitude. Meeting the one is a moment of divine orchestration, but it's essential to recognize that this journey is not all sunshine and roses. When two imperfect souls come together, there's bound to be sin, mistakes, and missteps. It's a natural part of being human. However, the beauty of a Christ-centered relationship lies in how you navigate these unpleasant moments. In the course of your journey together, both of you will undoubtedly fall short at times. You'll hurt each other, intentionally or unintentionally, and face situations where disagreements seem inevitable. But remember, these are opportunities for growth, not reasons for despair. The Bible reminds us in Romans 3, 23 that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. No one's exempt, not even the two people who've been brought together by a higher purpose. Embrace the fact that you both are a work in progress. As you embark on this journey, you'll discover a transformative power of grace. Just as God extends His unmerited favor to us, you must also offer each other forgiveness and grace. When conflicts arise, follow the biblical path of reconciliation outlined in Matthew 18, 15-17. Lovingly confront the issue, seek understanding, and be open to change. Remember that forgiveness isn't just a one-time event. It's a continual choice you make to release the past and move forward together. It's not just about reconciling with each other, but also with God. Remember that sin affects not only your relationship, but also your connection with your Heavenly Father. Seek His forgiveness and let His grace wash over both of you. It's through these moments of repentance and reconciliation that your love will deepen and your bond will grow stronger. When you meet the One, it's like finding the missing piece of your heart, someone who loves you just as deeply as you love them. Imagine being in a relationship where you don't have to constantly question if your partner truly loves you because their actions speak louder than words. That's the beauty of being with the One. Their love for you shines brightly, bringing joy and peace to your heart. In a successful relationship, both parties must love each other equally to ensure happiness and harmony in the home. However, the journey to finding the One can be fraught with challenges. Many people rush into relationships and marriage simply because they desire companionship. This haste often leads them to overlook the importance of ensuring that their partner reciprocates their love. This oversight can result in bitterness and disappointment within marriages. One aspect of life where haste should be avoided at all costs is marriage. We must patiently seek guidance from the Lord in prayer to reveal the one meant for us. The consequences of missing this divine guidance can impact every other aspect of our lives. The biblical story of Samson serves as a poignant example of the significance of choosing the right partner. Samson's ill-fated love for Delilah, who had ulterior motives, ultimately led to his downfall. He was destined for a greater purpose, but his poor choice in a life partner had devastating consequences. It serves as a stark reminder that to discover the One, you must first ensure that they love you deeply and are committed to a lifelong journey with you. In our quest for the One, we must also remember that true love isn't just about romance and affection. It's about a shared commitment to building a life together weathering storms, and experiencing the highs and lows as a team. It's about growing together, supporting one another's dreams, and nurturing a love that stands the test of time. When you meet the One, you'll face a few critics. 
Let's get real here. Finding the one doesn't always come with a unanimous round of applause from your friends and family. Sure, some lucky couples might experience a standing ovation, but for most of us mere mortals, it's a bit more complicated. Now, I'm not saying you should brush off every bit of advice or concern that comes your way. After all, the people who care about you genuinely want what's best for you. Proverbs 27.6 It's essential to take their thoughts and feelings into consideration, especially when it comes to matters of the heart. But here's the kicker. Not everyone in your Christian community is a relationship guru. Some may be less experienced or dealing with their own relationship baggage. Their disapproval might be more about their struggles than your budding romance. So, what's the takeaway? Don't be too quick to dismiss those who voice their concerns. But also, don't let every naysayer rain on your love parade. When you meet the one, you're bound to stir up a bit of controversy. And that's perfectly okay. Think of it like this. Even in the Bible, not all stories had smooth sailing. Take Noah, for instance. Imagine the neighbors raising their eyebrows as he built that ark. Or consider Ruth and Boaz. They didn't exactly follow the conventional path to love either. The point is, sometimes God's plan doesn't align with everyone's expectations. So when you encounter these skeptics, remember that your love story is uniquely yours, just like the plan God has for you. Embrace it, learn from it, and grow together. After all, the journey to the one isn't always a straight line. Sometimes it's a beautifully messy zigzag. In the end, what matters most is your faith, your connection, and your happiness. So let the critics whisper. Let them doubt. Because when you meet the one, their disapproval might just be a sign that you're on to something truly special. I'm sure that you'd love to know how to make yourself attractive as a Christian woman trusting God for your future husband. This is a very important subject because as a Christian woman, you need to understand two things. Number one, the rules of engagement for Christian romance are far different from the rules of engagement in worldly romance. Number two, you have a responsibility in drawing your future husband to you. Many Christian women called into marriage often miss this, thereby delaying or completely cutting themselves off from the great marital journey prepared for them by God. Prayer is good. It's good to pray. You must keep praying. However, in addition to that, you have to be proactive as you work side by side with the person God wants to bring you. It is correct that the man has to make the first move, do most of the work, and pursue the woman. This is the natural order of things, regardless of whether you're a Christian or an unbeliever. However, in this video, I'll share four things you need to do to attract the man God has ordained to be your future husband. Number one, when you meet the one chosen by God to be your future husband, try to evoke the right and godly desires in him. Let me explain this. I know that your greatest desire as a Christian woman is to marry a godly man who loves and fears God with all his heart. You want a man who has consecrated himself to God and is on a journey of sanctification, trusting God to help him develop and live by godly desires. If this is truly your desire for a husband and the father of your children, then you must also prepare yourself to be proactive in that relationship. How? By being the godly type of woman he's praying for. This type of woman is not trying to seduce him or make him sin against God, but rather she'll help him to grow in his faith, feel loved and appreciated, and make the right decisions. If you come into any godly man's life doing the opposite of this, one of these two things is guaranteed to happen. One, you'll turn him into the opposite of what you've prayed for, because instead of helping him be a man of God, you would have aroused the old nature of sin he was fighting to overcome as a Christian man. Or two, and he'll leave instead of coming closer to you. One of these two things is bound to happen if you don't evoke a positive feeling in him towards you that appeals to his deepest spiritual needs. One of the most attractive things a Christian man looks for in a woman 
is her ability to support his pursuit of God. It makes you irresistible. He wants someone who challenges him to seek God, shun sin, and follow God's purpose for his life. He will make it a life commitment to pursue you and have you by his side. Number 2. God will draw your future husband to you when you show him you like him. Society has taught women to hide their feelings for the men they like and let the man pursue her and find out himself. So, a Christian woman who has yet to have her mind transformed could like a man but find herself giving him the cold shoulder, avoiding him, and sometimes even being rude to him. The truth is that a man must be the one to pursue the woman. However, the woman has to show him that he can and he should. I love to reference the story of Ruth and Boaz. Yes, Boaz was being kind and generous and was ready to be a husband, but Ruth hadn't done anything to show she was open to a relationship at first. It took the wise counsel of her mother-in-law and mentor, Naomi, before she participated in the process. With one action, Boaz got the message and made a commitment. So, when you see a Christian man you feel drawn towards and whom you believe is drawn to you, give him signs that you feel the same way about him. Let him know that it's okay to call you, to say hi, and to ask you out. Make yourself available, welcoming the idea of a possible relationship with him. The right person will know how to take the appropriate action that shows he respects and genuinely desires a relationship with you. Number 3. God intends for you to attract your future husband by allowing him to feel like he brings you happiness and by letting him feel like a capable and cherished man in your life. It's crucial to understand the profound role of allowing a man to feel like a provider and a protector in your life. Every man wants to feel like that. In fact, it's this feeling that makes him feel he's ready to go for a relationship in the first place. This dynamic aligns beautifully with God's design for harmonious relationships between a man and a woman. Firstly, embracing vulnerability is a powerful key. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise, regardless of who they are. God has made you a woman, and He has made you a beautiful one at that. Allow yourself to be open and receptive to His care and affection. Women often want to be strong and independent, which is commendable, but it's equally important to let Him see your softer side and feel that He is seen and appreciated. Share your joys with him, your hopes, and even your vulnerabilities. By doing so, you invite him into your inner world, where he can provide emotional support and care. Think about it. No one wants to be where they don't feel valued. A man must feel like and be shown that he's been accepted as wise, strong, and responsible. This is the bedrock of a solid and loyal relationship that will last, and it leads to a second point. Secondly, recognize and appreciate his efforts, whether it's a small gesture like finding something he's interested in and helping him pursue it more. Secondly, recognize and appreciate his efforts, whether it's a small gesture like finding something he's interested in and helping him pursue it more, planning his goals with him and offering helpful input, suggesting more profitable things he can do with his resources to help him grow, or acknowledging his actions with gratitude. This not only makes him feel valued, but also reinforces his sense of purpose in your life. Moreover, encourage his leadership. In any relationship, there's a natural ebb and flow of decision-making. Allow him to take the lead as God has ordained for him. It doesn't mean that you're irrelevant. It simply means that you're choosing to humble yourself, submit, and obey to God's model for godly marital relationships. This isn't about relinquishing your voice, but rather fostering an environment where both partners contribute their strengths. Lastly, communication is paramount. Share your feelings, desires, and expectations openly and honestly. Let him know how his love and support make you happy. This affirmation strengthens the bond between you and lets him commit himself to doing even more to make you happier. Therefore, to attract your future husband that God has ordained for you, 
you must let him feel like a strong and valued man by allowing him to make you happy. Although the modern world may tell you differently, embracing feminine vulnerability and letting the right man contribute to your joy will help you nurture both a relationship and also align yourself with God's design for love and partnership for the two of you. Lastly, number four, spend time in places where he can find you. Back to the story of Ruth. Did you know that this was one of the things Naomi asked her to do? No one who wants to be seen hides themselves, and no godly woman who wants to be found by men of the light spends time hiding in the dark. Take wisdom from this, dear daughter of God. As much as it's okay to embrace yourself as a respectable and reserved person who loves her space, always staying at home and locking yourself indoors may not give the right and godly man the opportunity to find you. You need to go out, make yourself visible. Naomi told Ruth to not only attend Boaz's feast, but to make sure she knew where Boaz would lie down after the party. Then she must go and lie down at his feet. This is placing herself strategically where Boaz would not only see her, but also know that she was the woman for him. If you want a Christian and godly man, you must go where Christian and godly men go. You may not find that man at a nightclub, an ungodly dating app, or some wild party. Matthew chapter 24, verse 28 says, Wherever there's a carcass, there the vultures will gather. In your journey to find a godly man, remember that divine connections often happen when you position yourself in places where like-minded Christian individuals gather. Trust in God's timing and His plan and be open to His guidance. Your faith, presence, and obedience will lead you to the man meant for you and will attract him to you.